Hey, I thought we could try something a little bit different today. I don't have an integral on the board necessarily. I have, so instead of starting with an integral, we have here instead minus one half factorial. And at first this seems pretty strange because we generally know factorial to be defined for positive integers and zero. Here we have a fraction and it's negative. And so what I wanted to go over was to extend the factorial to fractions and complex numbers and negative numbers we have something called the gamma function that allows us to do that. Okay, so over here on the right, we have our definition of the gamma function up top here. So for this extended definition that we have for factorial, we actually define it in terms of an integral. So we're not getting away from integrals too fast. But beyond just the integral, we have this connection. We have this formula, the second formula. So for example, if you were looking at like gamma of five, if our n is five, then that's the same thing as four factorial. And this integral here would give that value if we plugged a five in for the z here that integral would give us the same value as four factorial or 24. So now what I want to do is look at specifically this minus one half factorial case and how we can use the gamma function for this. So what we're going to do is use this second formula and just notice gamma of one half, if we do half minus one, we get minus one half factorial. So what we're looking for when we're looking for minus one half factorial is just this gamma of one half. And then for that, what we'll do is we'll use this first formula to put it in the form of an integral. Okay, so we're looking at the integral from zero to infinity. Instead of using t, let's just use x. And then our input's a half, so half minus one, we're gonna have a minus one half on here, e to the minus x dx. So now we just need to work through this integral and see if we can find a, a nice value for this thing. So the way I wanna approach this integral is I'm gonna do a u substitution. I'm gonna call my u square root of x, just because we notice we have one, essentially one over square root x here. And then let's just take a, noticing that u squared is gonna be x, we'll take a derivative and we're gonna have derivative of x, we're gonna have dx equals 2u du. Then we'll make this substitution, we'll plug an infinity in here, square root of infinity is infinity, plug a zero in, get back zero. Again, this is the same thing as one over the square root of x, so we can write that piece as one over u. Okay, we're gonna have e, x is u squared, so we're gonna have e minus u squared, dx is this thing, 2u, du. U's are gonna cancel here. Then we can rewrite this and bring our two out front there. So we're gonna have two integral from zero to infinity, e minus u squared, du. Okay, and you may recognize this over here as the Gaussian integral. I've done a number of videos on that, but we have a value for that. We know that this, without proving it, the value of this integral is going to be the square root of pi over two. So now let's just get our solution. We're gonna have our two up front, square root of pi over two is gonna give us a nice solution of just square root of pi. Okay, now one thing before I finish up this video, I just wanna use this last formula here, is what I like to do is once we, you know, we've, we've established this value, looking at it in terms of a factorial or in terms of gamma function. So I think the really useful thing that you can do with factorials or with gamma function is once you know the value Oh, once you have one value, you can find other values from that. A quick example of this in terms of the factorial, right? If you have five factorial, well, we know we're familiar that the same, that's the same thing as five times four factorial. Well, let's say I don't know the value of five factorial. Let's say my calculator is not handy, but I do know four factorial. Okay, I know four factorial is 24. Well, now I just need to multiply five times 24, right? And I have 120. And you might think, okay, that's not very useful. This is a pretty common value, this is, I can get this with a calculator, right? But then if we're looking at say, three half factorial, I think it becomes a little more useful because this is the same thing, just using the second formula, that's the same thing as gamma of five halves, right? Five halves minus one gives three and a half factorial. Well then using this last formula, okay, gamma of five halves, we can write it as, this is our n plus one value, we can write this using this right side as three halves times gamma of three halves. And then we can just kind of repeat this process. Gamma of three halves, we can write as one half times gamma of one half, just using the same formula again. So then substituting that back in here, we have three halves times one half times gamma of one half. But gamma of one half is this value that we just found. So we know for gamma of five halves, three halves times one half, we have three fourths gamma one half is square root of pi, 
Okay, and we just found this other value for gamma five halves, which is the same thing as three half factorial. The reason I bring this up is if you've ever taken differential equations or you're familiar with Laplace transforms, then this comes up quite a bit and you kind of want a way that you can quickly get to these. You could have, now, there's a few different ways. You could, you could memorize answers, you could, there's a formula, or you could do something like this where you work back to a known value. Okay, so that's it. I'm actually gonna do a playlist with a few different examples like this to try to cover all the different scenarios with some negative fractions, positive fractions. I also have a quiz called Gamma Function. I think it's called Gamma Function Quiz. I'll provide a link in the description and I'll give a link to that playlist and some of the other videos. Thanks, have a good day.